Well hello Internet and welcome to part two of my Ruby on Rails tutorial. This tutorial is going to be about all making everything easy. In the last part of the tutorial I gave you sort of an overview of a lot of things in Rails. This time we're going to focus in on creating a real blog. It's going to allow you to create articles, we're going to have users, we're going to allow people to make comments, we're going to style everything with something called SAS, we're going to of course create a database, we're going to do a whole bunch of different things. But what I need to do now is go in and really zoom zoom in on the things you need to understand if you want to develop Rails web applications. Okay, so we have the model view controller. That is the basis of almost everything inside of developing a Rails web application. So if the user goes to the browser and they type in users, that is going to call for a specific method or function to be fired and executed inside of the controller. More specifically, that is going to call for the index action to be executed, which we're going to look at in detail here in a second. Then the controller is going to tell the model, hey, I need all the users, so go get them from the data. Database. The database is going to call for the ID, password, and emails are going to be sent back to the models. That information is going to be stored in what is called an instance variable called users, which can be used by the view to display it in the browser. That is the whole process. Now let's look at it in detail. Now you're going to have not only URLs passed in the browser, but you're also going to have specific HTTP methods. We're going to have get, post, patch, put, and delete. So when the user types in users and decides it wants to use the get method, the controller knows that it needs to execute the index function. Whenever users is going to be used, but we're going to use the post HTTP method, then the controller knows it has to use the create method and so forth and so on. If we would type in users and a specific ID, that tells the controller we need to call the update method and we more specifically need to update the user with the ID, whatever the ID is. And that is the job of the router. And the great thing about this is Rails creates all of this for us. And we're going to see that in a second. So let's zoom in here on the controller. Whenever we specifically call for the index method to fire, this is the index method. This is all it is. It's very simple. And article all is going to call the model and the database and pass over all of our articles to display on the screen. That's it. Here specifically you're going to see everything we're going to create. Here are all the HTTP methods, get, post, patch, put, and delete, and they're matching URLs that are going to be put inside of the browser. And again, for the most part, these are going to be generated on their own. And then you're also going to see the matching controller methods or functions that are going to be fired whenever these specific URLs and HTTP methods are executed at the same time. You're also going to see here that index is going to display all the articles. New is going to create a form that's going to allow us to create a new article. Create is going to allow us to create a new article. Show is going to display one article that's going to be whatever the ID is. Edit is going to allow us to edit a specific article with this ID. Updates going to allow us to update an article and delete is going to allow us to delete an article. That is everything. This is everything you really need to understand. MVC, Model View Controller, you need to know that there's different HTTP methods and specific paths. You don't need to memorize this, you just need to understand what these guys are and what they do. That's it. The model part is thankfully, for the most part, handled by Rails. So we're just going to say to Rails, hey, we want you to handle the configuration that's going to allow us to grab data from the database and provide it to our controller we can use in our view and display in the browser. That is the model part. Pretty much, for the most part, you don't even have to worry about it. And then you have the view. Remember the instance variable articles that we had right here in index? There it is. Well, in the view, we're going to be able to use it. And we're going to use it right like this. We're going to cycle through all the different articles, output a title, a post, a user ID, and then links that are going to allow us to call for show, edit, and destroy on said articles. That is pretty much everything. This is what you need to understand about Rails. Take a deep breath if it's confusing. It's really not, though. It's just something you have to get used to. And this is the entire process of creating a Rails web application right here. So what we're going to need to do is create our database tables. Rails is going to do it for us, but we need to know what we want inside of our tables. So we're going to have a user that's going to have an ID. This is automatically going to be created for us, the ID, and it's on an auto increment every time a new user is created. And then we need to know that we need a password, which is going to be a string, an email that's going to be a string. Then we're going to have articles. Again, ID is created for us. So we're going to have a title, which is a string, post, which is a string, user ID, which is going to be an integer, and that's going to link to this table. Then we're going to have comments. Again, ID, the commenter, the body of the comments, and the article ID which is going to match into our articles. So now let's go in and create the whole thing. And basically what we're going to have here, like I said before, we're going to be able to create articles, users, comments, and we're going to style everything and create a database. 
Up here we have our browser where we're going to execute everything. Down here we're going to have our terminal or command line if you're in Windows. And over here we're going to have Sublime Text that's going to allow us to create everything. And what we're going to use this time are what are called scaffold generators to basically create our Rails web application. And basically a scaffold in Rails is going to be the full set, the model, the database, the migration for our model, the controller to manipulate it, the views uh, to manipulate the data, and a whole suite of testing features that are also going to be provided, which we're going to get into in the later part of the tutorial. So to create this whole entire thing, we have to decide what directory we want to put everything in, and then we're going to type in Rails, New, and I'll just call this SP Blog dash D. We're going to be using MySQL again, and then type in MySQL and hit Enter. This guy's going to create everything for us, and we went over what all these guys are before, but you can see a whole bunch of different files are created for us. Then whenever that guy's all done with, we are then going to come in here, and we're going to say Bundle install and that's going to go out and get everything that our app is going to need whoops wait a second we're going to first off go change directory to sp blog and then we're going to type in bundle install and there it got it all right so everything's all created for us now we need to set up our database so what we're going to do is if you are on windows you're going to type in subl.exe and the directory you want to open up in sublime text or we're going to type in subl and dot on linux and on OS X and you can see here's everything that was just created first thing we're going to do is set up our database go into the config directory and database YML and we are going to name our user SB admin and the password is going to be password terrible don't use that here is going to be the database name we're going to be using so let's just copy that so we can use that later and then we need to define our socket and the easiest way to get that is to open up the MySQL workbench and more specifically, we're going to come over here and click on server status, and you're going to see your socket pops up right there. There we are. Copy that. Bounce down here. Paste in your socket right like that. Yours might be different than mine. Maybe the same. And we're going to create our database. So let's go and copy this guy and make sure we save our database.yml file. And then inside of our terminal, we need to create the database. So we're going to log in with MySQL5-U. Yours might just be MySQL. User. And I'm going to log in with root, and there, and then type in my password, and here I am. Now we're going to create our database, and then just paste in the name of the database that we got from the database.yml file. Put a semicolon, and there it is, all created for us. Use, and then paste that in there again. Database changed. Then inside of this, we're going to create our user we want to use for our database. So grant all privileges on and then there is the name of our database dot star and then to sb admin which is the user's name but we're gonna have to put this inside of quotes sb admin at again quotes local host quotes and then identified by and the password you gave to that user so that's just gonna be password in this situation semicolon and there we went and created that now we want to go in and verify that we created it so let's exit out of mysql and let's log back in as sb admin and password and there we're logged back in and then we can say use and there is our blog database changed put our scroll back and if we come in here and say show tables you're going to see there's nothing there. Well, there will be something there very quickly. And we're going to leave that open and open up a new shell here. And now we're going to use the scaffold generator to go in and generate our user tables and our controllers and everything. And to do that, we're going to type in Rails, generate, scaffold, user is going to be the specific one this time. And then we need to say what we want in our user table. Well, we want a password. We don't need to put an ID in there. That's automatically created for us and we want that to be of type string and then we want an email which is also going to be of type string and hit enter and this might take a little bit of time because it's doing a lot of work in the background and there you can see it created everything so it has the migrate file which is going to allow us to create the tables in our database there's going to be our user model right there test units which we'll get into later on here is going to be our controller then we'll have all of our different views created for us there they are helper files and assets and here's going to be our style sheet we'll use to edit our styles and everything else okay so there we go that created everything for us very useful now we need to go in and have our database tables created for us so we're gonna go rake db migrate 
hit enter and there you can see it went and created that table if we jump back over into MySQL and click on show tables you're gonna see there is the users table and if we say describe users you're gonna see there they are and there's our password and there's our email there is the ID that was automatically generated here is created at and updated at which are always generated for us automatically and our application is also generated for us and we can just type in rails server hit enter and if we go to localhost 3000 right like this you can see our rails application is ready to go now let's go in here to the views and sort of go through and explain what's going on with those so we're going to go into our app section and then views there's views and there you can see the user views that are generated for us now this guy right here is what we call a partial and what this is going to allow us to do is separate out duplicate code so inside of edit.html you can see right here here is the partial so whenever you see render form that is automatically going to take underscore form and put all of that code that we have right there wherever that shows up inside of our view and you can also see over here here's index there is JSON a way of basically pulling all of our information out in JSON format get more into that later here is new there's show and this is going to allow us to show a very specific part of our database as well and if we want to open all these guys up the route file is going to do a lot of work for us but we could just go into our local host and do something like users and let's say we wanted to get user one well first off we have to create a user so let's just go users and here you can see and we'll go new user and we'll create one and I'm gonna go a b c d e f g h just to put a password inside of there db at aol.com and create user and user was successfully created and if we click on back you're gonna see the user show up right there we're then going to be able to go to edit and you're going to see users one there's the id for our user and we're specifically in the edit view we can then click on back and go back and do that or we can click on destroy which is going to say you know are you sure you want to delete that let's say cancel and then we click on show as well and that's going to specifically show our user all right so there's the difference between the views and what pops up and how the urls are going to pull the right information and display it for us you're also going to be able to see if we go into users controller which of course is in the app and more specifically the controllers folder here are all of the matching functions that are going to be executed so whenever we want index you're going to see it's going to get all of our users and throw them over there for us all this stuff was automatically generated i didn't have to type any of this in there's show there's new there's edit there's create there is every single thing automatically generated for us because we use scaffold let's go into another terminal area here and let's make sure we're in the right place sp blog there it is there's all our files and if we would type in rake routes like this you're going to see the matching http methods also show up here and there they are so there's git there's post there's the other get and all of these other guys patch put and delete and you're also going to see if we come over here how they match up to specific methods inside of the controller so that's all the stuff that I showed you before clear that out now we can come back over inside of sublime text and let's take a look at our route file so let's click on this and you can see there is the resources user that was automatically put inside of there for us and if we wanted the users to show up as default we could type in root and then users index save that up over here and just change this to regular local host and you can see all our users show up right there that's how easy that is to set up and now we'll jump over into the controller so just come over here in the controllers folder users controller take a look at before action and basically what this is going to do for us is we're going to say before a user is created we do not want to show show edit update and destroy on our screen so that's what the before action means and like I showed you before here's going to be users and if we jump over to the users view and then specifically look at index you're going to see right here the exact same code I showed you before see there's users and it's going to allow us to cycle through and display all those on our screen now we're going to go and generate our article again using the scaffold generator open this guy up and to generate all that we're going to go rails generate scaffold article and then we're going to have to list all the things we want our articles table to have so we're going to have a title which is going to be a string and then we're going to also want to have the post and that's going to be text because that's going to be a little bit longer and then we also want to match up with the user id for the user that comes in here and i'm actually going to show you different ways to create foreign keys and so forth but this time we're just going to focus in on basically pointing at a user and then in the next part whenever we deal with comments we're going to actually create 
a foreign key and link those comments directly to the articles. There you can see all of the views and the migration files and everything has been created for us. Jump back over here and let's specifically look at roots and you can see also there is articles as listed as a resource. We also now have an articles controller, we have views for our articles and everything else we're going to need here. Now let's take a look at validates. It's a very easy way for us to come in here and make certain demands before we will allow the user to go in and edit our database files and we're going to do that inside of the model. So let's come over here to models and first we'll go to users and let's say that we want to require a password as well as an email to be to allow us to you know create a user. So what we're going to do is we're going to say a validates and password in this situation and if we want to demand that it be there we're going to type in presence and true. Let's say we also want to demand that it be a certain length before we'll allow it to create this. So we'll say length and then we'll say minimum and let's say we demand that it is eight characters in length. That's all we need to do. All right, so let's also come in and validate and let's say that we want an email. We can just keep this simple and just say presence true and that's all we'll need to do there. Now what you'll see if we go into our web application and we click on new user I oh, got a little error, no big deal. Just remember we went and created our migration files, but we did not create those tables in our database. And that's one of the things in Rails in, in an upcoming tutorial, I'm going to go through all of their common errors and what they mean if you see them. But we're just going to type in rake db migrate, and that's going to create our tables for us. I think that's one of the things that confuses people about Rails more than anything else is understanding the sometimes arcane types of error messages you get. And let's just jump over into MySQL and we'll say show tables and now you can see there's the articles table and if we come in here and reload this you can now see we can create a new user and if we go and we don't type in eight characters and we don't even put in an email and hit create user you're going to see that rails automatically displays errors for us here and if we don't do anything like let's just say we come in here and don't type in anything you're going to see we get three errors so we can't have a blank password it must be eight characters long and you can't have a blank email so that's very useful that it automatically creates all that for us Let's also go into the model for our article and let's validate a couple more things here. Go on this and validates and we'll say that we have a title. We demand that the title exists for our articles. So type in presence again and then true. And then let's say that this time we want to define a maximum or a minimum length. Let's say minimum or maximum. I think that makes more sense so that we don't have titles that are super, super huge. We'll say maximum 50. And then we'll also come in and validate our post. And we'll say that we demand that it be there. And that's all we need to do to have that set up. So now we have the model set up for our articles as well as our users. Now we want to set up an association between the users and the articles. And how we do that is with belongs to and has many. And this is also going to further enforce the fact that we should just let Rails generate all this stuff for us most of the time. But if we don't want to or if we forgot, this is how we're going to do it. So if our users are going to potentially have many articles, what we're going to do is type in has many right here. Again, we're inside of the model called user.rb and we're just going to say articles and save that. Then we're going to go into article.rb and we're going to say that each of these articles are going to be belonging to a user. So we'll say belongs to user and that's going to create the association between those two. Now we'll go in and create our comment model and to do that we'll go back inside of the terminal and inside of here and as you can see I'm running the server at the same time. Now to generate the comment model we're going to go rails generate model and as this tutorial continues I'm going to get more into the nitty nitty gritty of this stuff so that you'll understand every single thing. Just want to have a little bit of fun here though. So we're going to have a commenter which is going to be a string. The body of the comment could potentially be long so we're going to have that be text and this is automatically going to work with any database. We're using MySQL here but we're going to use any database and if we want to link these comments to specific articles we're going to say what we want to link it to and we're going to say references and that's going to generate everything we need for our comments. Now we can go rake db migrate and you can see here it also went in and created a foreign key for us. If we jump back over into MySQL and say show tables there you can see there is comments and if we come in specifically and say describe comments there you can see the ID and here we can see that we have a link to our articles. If we then also come over here once again 
and look at our comment model open it up you can see that it automatically put belongs to article inside of there for us and now we'll need to go inside of routes.rb again this is inside of the configure folder and here we're going to need to state that comments is going to be a nested resource inside of all of our articles and to do so we'll just go after articles and then we'll go do and then we'll say resources comments right like this and then end and that's going to nest all of our comments in the articles exactly where they need to be and now let's generate our controller for our comments again open up Ruby there we go open up our terminal and to generate this controller we're gonna go rails generate controller comment but whenever I did that I actually thought hey wait a minute I wanted to call this comments so what do I do? I automatically went in there and created all this stuff and now I found that I don't need it. No big deal. What we're gonna do instead is go Rails, destroy, controller, comment, exactly what we just typed in there. And that's gonna go in there and fix everything for us. It removed everything, very useful. And now we'll type it in the right way. So we'll say Rails, generate, controller, comments. And it's going to regenerate everything. Easy way to fix just about any error that you might have. Clear that out. Now I'm going to go into the view and make sure that we have our comments all show up inside of our articles. Pop back inside of here. Want to edit our views. There's articles and here is show. This is where we're going to put our comments. Of course that's going to make sense. Cycle our way down inside of here. We're right after the user area. Give ourselves some room. H2 tag and we'll just have comments be right there. Now if we want to cycle through all of the different article comments bracket percent sign and then we're gonna go at article which is that instance variable and then specifically comments each do and temporarily hold it in the variable name comment and then as we're cycling through here we could have commenter and then we'll go and get the commenter and display it by just going comment dot commenter close that off and then we're gonna do the same thing for our specific comment that they made so comment changes to comment and this is gonna be comment body and this of course is going to match up with our tables so let's go into my SQL and we'll say show tables and there's the comments table right there and describe comments now let's zoom in here and you can see right there there's commenter and here is body that is where it's coming from now after this of course we're gonna have to close off this guy this little loop that we created here so come down here and just type in end now we also want to allow them to add a comment so we'll come in here create another h2 tag and say add a comment what we're gonna do here is use a form builder to create a form for our template so we're gonna say form for and I'm gonna do a lot more with form for as this tutorial continues just bear with me here what I'm saying here is I want to target this article and then on top of that add comments to this article so you like this and then article comments build so that's saying I want to add specific comments to this specific article that I am currently on we'll say do and then F and then close that off and now I'm going to cycle through and generate the forms that are going to allow them to come in here and add all these different comments to our article to do so want to create a label commenter and then we could close this off generate a text field text field commenter and then we're going to allow them to put in the actual comment so let this be a label and then just change this to body which is the name of it inside of our database and then we have this guy right here change him also to body because that's also going to be it well let's make this a text area and then finally we need to put a submit button inside of here F submit if you guys go in here I'm gonna make this very very structured there's a link in the uh, description underneath the video that's going to allow you to walk through this whole entire process of creating everything here and then of course don't forget to end everything by putting end inside of here then we're gonna have all of our other additional links make sure we save that and now let's go over into the comments controller and update that so it's a little bit of doing some things for us and a little bit of doing things from scratch in this tutorial. Now whenever a new comment is going to be created we need to be able to handle that and of course the create function is going to be called when a new comment is created so we're going to go define create and close that off. We want to very first get the article the comment is attached to so just because we're going to need to match up the comments with all the articles and we're going to store those in instance variables of course so that we'll be able to use them in the view and to get the article this is attached to remember we're in comments controller we call find params and then we're specifically looking for the article id then we want to come in and create and save our comment 
So we'll go at comment equal to at article comments create pass in our comment parameters and then we want to go to the article that this comment is associated with and this is going to be a redirect it's going to send the browser somewhere new to article path so what this is doing basically is getting the article the comment is associated with creating this comment and then redirecting back to said article and displaying the comments that are underneath that article. And if we want to redirect back to the main article where this is created, we just type in article and then of course end. And comments parameters, because we do not want people to be able to come in here and mess around with this, this is always kept private. So we'll go private and all of your private methods need to show up last in the files. If you put create after this, it's going to cause all kinds of problems. We're going to go define. There's comments params. And then we go params dot require comment and then we're going to permit two pieces of data to be passed inside of here well wait a second close that off so we're only going to allow data to be sent inside of here this is for security reasons and that data is going to be the commentor and the body of the comment and then of course put end here to close off this function make sure we save everything go to localhost 3000 articles and we can come in and click on new article and we can say something like Rails is awesome. There we go. Whoop, I left the post blank. So let's go back, I accidentally hit enter with my finger. Yes, it is, all right. And user, let's just put one inside of there. We could have this tied in so that it only shows the users that are created in our database, but we didn't do that yet. We'll hit create article. And you're gonna see an error show up here. Did this on purpose. What this is gonna show you here, cause I wanna show you errors that come up so that you know how to fix them. So it's saying undefined method comments inside of show and more specifically no method error for article show what that is going to tell us is that this error is inside of our articles model so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and take a look at exactly what that could be so let's open up articles there's our articles model and what's it saying it's saying undefined method comments what that is telling us is we forgot to come in here and tie our articles in with our comments. And that just basically means we need to tell it that it has many comments, which it does. And save that and reload it. And now you can see Rails is awesome. Yes, it is. And here we're allowed to add additional comments as well. Now we'll go into the commenter area right here. Type in Derek, super article, create comment. And there you can see the sort of the article and there you can see the comment also shows up there. So let's jump back again and look at our full list of articles and you can see that it looks rather ugly. So that must be really hard to clean up. Nah, not really. Let's go in and talk about SAS and how we can style everything so that it looks a little bit prettier. Now, of course, if we're going to be styling things, we're going to be styling our style sheets and our style sheets are going to be located up here inside of assets and of course in the style sheets directory. And specifically, we want to zoom in and we're just going to edit the article style sheets. So here we are, and let's think about what we want to style. Let's just first off decide that we want to just style the articles index. So those are going to be in the view section. So here's articles and here is the index file. And you can see everything is in table format. That was dis is the thing that was displaying really ugly previously. So what's the minimal amount we can do to this to style this up and make it look a little bit prettier? Let's say that we just want our rows to be different colors, for example, inside of our table. How could we do that really easy here without messing around too much? Well, let's just come down inside of our table here and let's say that we want each row to be a different color. Well, there's a really easy way to do that with Rails. All you're gonna do is go class and then we're gonna put our little brackets inside of here, equal to. And if we want to change the class name for each one of the rows, we're gonna say cycle. And then we'll say that we want the first one to be list line odd, right like that. And then the next one to be list line even and then close that off and then put our little brackets inside of there. So that's gonna have each row in our table get a different class name. The first one's gonna be list line odd and then list line even and then so forth and so on as the table's being generated. And that's all I'm gonna do with this guy. And then I'm specifically gonna go into the article style sheet. Here it is right here. And then let's just start styling these guys. So let's think about what we want to show up here. We have our table right here. So let's say we want the borders not to show. Jump back over into this. Say something like table, and then we're gonna type in border, and I might do a SAS tutorial, SAS for neat, and let's say collapse. That's gonna get rid of those borders for us inside of our tables. So then bounce back over here. Let's also say that we want to target table TRs as well as TDs. 
down inside of here so we can add some padding. We'll just go table, TR, TD, and we'll say padding, 10px. Let's also say that we want our table heading, this guy up here, to be a different color, no problem. T head, and let's also change some alignment. Align everything to the left. Let's change the background color to dark color, 30. 8F, and I'm getting these colors from the wiki colors thing on Wikipedia, if you wondered. And let's say that I want the text color to be white, so that it shows up nice. Say we also want to put some padding in the table heading area. We need to target TH, can't target T head whenever you're handling padding. And let's just say we want that to be 10 pixels. And now we can cycle through the different rows, and we're going to go list, line, even. Remember when we put those in for each rows in our table? And we'll just go and change the background color for this guy to FAE BD7. And then we're going to do a similar thing with list line odd. Change this to odd. And then we'll change this a little bit light colors, right like that. And save those style sheets. Make sure everything else is saved. And now if we bounce over into articles and reload the screen, you're going to see that that shows up a light color. These are all the different changes. We can create a new article. The Ruby is great. And then we can say, yes, it is great, whatever. Greta, and we'll just do user one, create article, automatically created, and then we'll click on back. And there you can see the table and it looks a lot prettier. So there you go, guys. That is a heck of a lot of information about Rails. I'm going to keep making more Rails tutorials. They're going to come out very quickly this weekend. So please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.